Welcome to Matt Made It. I am Matt. Thanks for stopping by. Several weeks ago, my aunt contacted me about making a cribbage board for my cousin for Christmas. So today's video will show some of the design work that went into making the board and of course carving it on the CNC machine. But I don't want to get too deep into the weeds as far as using the Vectric software and all that and have it get too long. But if that's something you are interested in, I will make a longer version of this video that will go more in depth into the design side on the computer of making a game board like this. So if you want to see that, remember to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you get an alert when that video comes out. But for today, I just want to say Merry Christmas to everybody watching, especially Uncle Frank, Aunt Robin, and Scott, and anybody else that's there. Love you guys. I miss you guys. And Scott, can't wait to get together and play a game of cribbage on your new board. I hope you love it. Without further ado, let's get to making the board. Okay, let me go over what I've done so far on this cribbage board. If you come up here, you see I have material 16 by 10 by an inch and a half thick. And I am uh, using the center as my uh, reference point here. So if you come over here where it says copy along vectors and you click on that, you see copy object. So I made these three eighth inch holes all in the line. I'm gonna copy those and then I'm gonna hit shift and copy that layout oval. So what that's telling the software is this is what I wanna copy and this is the vector I wanna copy them along. So you come over here, make sure that's clicked, align objects, we're on our layers, our layer that is holes. So it'll make the new holes on our correct layer and we want 150 copies around this whole oval. So you just hit copy and there you go. So we have all these holes made, um, but obviously we don't need this many holes. So here's where it gets a little bit tedious. We gotta start deleting some of these. So we, I'm just gonna choose those and delete those. This row and this row is going to be where you start playing the game. So I'm gonna leave those two and take out a row and then every six rows I'm gonna delete them because we want rows of five we want sets of five rows is that, am I saying that right so you go five then there's a space then five so we go two four six delete it two four six delete it and we're just gonna do this operation all the way around so this doesn't take too long but once you do this you know you can save this and this can be a template for the game. And now we just need an ending hole. We need a single hole here for the winner. You can put it here or here. I think I'm gonna put it there. So I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna choose these. I'm going to come over here and ungroup them. Now they're individuals. I can choose one, delete it, one, delete it, and there you go. So that's how we lay out the holes for our cribbage board. You see, it wasn't too hard. Um, software does a lot of the work for us over here in the, uh, the copy along vector operation. Makes it pretty uh, quick, pretty simple.
the design is looking good, but I want to do a test carve in some cheap wood before I start carving into some expensive hardwood. So I bought a half sheet of particle board. I have some gluing up to give me the inch and a half thickness I need to carve the body into. And this piece will be the lid. So while that glue is drying, I'm going to go ahead and carve the lid right now and see how that looks. So I have the G-code loaded to do a test carve on the cribbage board body. So I'm going to fire up the router and the uh, vacuum and we'll get this started and see how it turns out. Well, so far so good. Uh, it's a little rough being in this particle board, but that's to be expected. Obviously when I cut this in hardwood, I'll lower my uh, feed and speed rates a little bit. You know, adjust my router settings and all that so it, it uh, cuts clean, but um, so far so good. I'm going to move on to the next uh, toolpath. So I did that test carve in this particle board and what did I learned? I learned that particle boards are pretty crappy wood for doing a test carve in. Um, it, it chips, especially doing this like delicate lettering that's going to be in here. It just chips out too much. It doesn't represent what that lettering is going to look like at all. On the other hand, my pocket here where the deck of cards is going to go is spot on. My pocket for the pegs is spot on. This chamfer around the edge looks really good. The chamfer on the outside edge didn't quite turn out. I might just get rid of it and just round it over with my palm router, like a quarter inch round over bit. Um, after it's carved, I think that would be fine. And it didn't carve the chamfers on the inside of these pockets around this rim here. Um, so I'll have to look at that. And also my lid doesn't quite fit inside the hole here. It's just, just a touch too big. So I gotta reduce that down a little bit and um, recarve that. I'm going to redo this in MDF. I think that would represent what um, a hardwood would look like a lot better than this will. At least it won't all chip out like this. It should stay together pretty good. It's flatter, holds together better. So it should be a better material for doing this in. So I did a couple test carves, made some changes to the G-code, and it looks like I got everything worked out. So I'm going to go ahead and mill up this Oroco. This is what the final product is going to be made out of. I've never worked with this before. It's a pretty hard wood, but it should carve nicely and it should look really nice when it's all done. The bandsaw is all set up. I'm going to start uh, milling this up.
So this is the final carve in Yoroko, and I'm going to carve the lid first. It's all set up. Here we go. You're always going to have a little cleanup to do by hand, but that's with any wood project, right? But that looks pretty good. Pretty good. All right. So this is the big pocket carve for the cribbage board. It's all set up, so let's get to it. Now I have a 90 degree V bit in, I reprobe Z, and I'm gonna cut some chamfers around these edges here, and then what will be the outside of the cribbage board? to do the next carve and of course a reprobe Z. You always want to reprobe Z in between bit changes. So now I have an eighth inch bit in and I probed X, Y, and Z because I changed the diameter of my bit and this is going to drill out all the holes for the pegs. So I was doing the final passes on the cribbage board last night. It was just cutting out this outside edge to, to free it up from the stock material. And that happened. Um, that's about three quarters of an inch deep. Cut right across the plane surface there. Um, there's no fixing that. This is basically just an expensive piece of firewood now. Um, very disappointed. Um, I was very disheartened last night. Anyways, I got a new piece. It's all milled up, ready to go. I'm going to get it set up. I'm not going to film any of this. 
I'm just going to shut the camera off and concentrate on getting this carve done properly and uh, I'll get this thing finished up. So the card's finished and it's all in one piece. I'm very happy about that. But this piece did not carve nearly as clean as the last one. Um, I don't know something with the grain or whatever, but um, I don't know if you can see there, but I have a ton of cleanup to do on this. I got stuff like this all over the place. So that's all right, I can deal with that as long as it's all in one piece and it, and it is and it looks good. I'll finish cutting this out on my bandsaw and clean this up and get it ready to finish. So it's been an adventure, but the finish line is in sight. So as you saw, when the curbage board was done carving, it was in pretty rough shape. So I spent a few hours uh, with scrapers and chisels and various sanding apparatus and got it looking really good. Um, and I got some finish on it and it just turned out beautiful. This wood, this Oroco, I'll show you. How pretty is that, huh? Really beautiful. So in the end, it turned out looking really nice. The only thing that I'm not really happy with is the magnet attaching system with the lid. When I put the lid on, I can feel the magnets grab it and hold it down, but if I turn it upside down, the lid's just too heavy for the magnets. I tested this out with the Redwood prototype. In that one, the magnets hold the lid on, but that's a much lighter wood and the lid's a little bit thinner. So it worked with the Redwood, but it doesn't work with this hardwood, um, the heavier hardwood. So if I make another one of these and I do the same type of system, I'll have to use stronger magnets or something like that. So Scott, love you, man. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to everybody else out there. I know you're going to like this and you'll get a lot of years of enjoyment out of this. And that's it for this one. Like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, all that jazz. And I'll see you for the next one.